Welcome to module three. We are still in the Windows security and forensic class, mm -hmm. and I'm still together with Hussain. I'm glad you're still watching us. Yeah. What are we going to cover in this module? Well, we're going to go through some details about Windows authentication or authentication components, um, like our passwords or hashes or Kerberos tickets and so on. Uh, so that's basically our agenda for, for this module. OK. Um, let's talk about the authentication landscape. Mm -hmm. This will be our uh, first um, topic. And you know, the breaches. We spoke yeah. about breaches. Uh, we should always assume the breaches. Why? That's the only way how we can prevent breaches. Yeah. When we look historically, I mean, this is straight from the history as well. We used to live once in a time in a high castle, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and it used to be, especially you're coming from Sweden where everything is in <laughs> castles. Yeah. Uh, we used to think that living in high places, high buildings, mm -hmm. make us more secure. Yeah. And if you look in the cybersecurity landscape, it's the same. So uh, people think having some sort of uh, security measures implemented mm -hmm. make them more secure. But things are changing as it changed yeah. uh, in the history as well. Now, if you look again in our slide, you will see that uh, having the long castle is not good enough because, mm -hmm. hey, what if, if a cloud comes on top of it? Yeah, basically people are moving out of that castle. Uh, they're being kept by the walls. I mean, there was just one, one door. You could control everything going in and out. And now they are, everybody is outside of that castle with the information. They do have access to that information, whether they're inside or outside. Uh, so it doesn't really matter if the walls are high enough or the doors are well controlled or not. The information is still there. It's, it's, it's on their laptops or accessible through via their laptops or any mobile devices they happen to have. So. Most of our attendees or watchers will probably not remember, we used to have one desktop, one phone, mm -hmm. and a static desk unless you were outside in sales. Yeah. Uh, but today, we have so many other components besides tablets, phones, Everything is mm -hmm. up in the cloud, right? Salesforce, Microsoft CRM, Exchange. You, we used to have Exchange yeah. Server, now yeah. Office 365, SharePoint, mm. or I can count endless applications. So this brings us to another topic where, the, where we look at the cyber attack techniques. Mm -hmm. We have t uh, targeting, phishing, pass the hash, custom malware, application exploit. I mean, we can talk all, about, all day about this again, yeah. but no. What I would like to do is, let's recap all the hashes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I told everybody <laughs> that we done it with Milad yeah. last yeah. year on Defense and Depth course, which I was using many tools to extract the hashes. But if you don't mind, Hussein, yeah, extract and crack can you please mm. tell me how we can extract it? Why? Yeah. Past well, the hash, it's still there. It's still uh, usable, mm -hmm. and um, I'm going to ask you to recommend some prevention tactics as well, not yeah. in details, mm -hmm. even though many people talked about it. Yeah. Uh, I want to tell you that it's still here, uh, even when you use Windows 10. If you don't implement the right measures, this mm. can um, give you some trouble. That's right. So, how was the past hash work? How was the past hash working? Well, uh, past the hash is simply by protocol. So when we mentioned that it is by protocol, we mean you cannot really get rid of it. Uh, this is because you can always use the hash value for that password and inject that value in any Windows system, and that Windows system will be willing to use that as if somebody's typed in the password on, on the keyboard on that system. So that's why we, we keep telling it's by protocol. There is really no way to prevent it. If you have the representation of the password, which is your hash, we, Either it's the anti hash or the LM hash. Now, hopefully, we're not using LM hashes anymore. Uh, that should belong to the history. Um, but we still have some systems around us um, uh, that are relying on, on backward compatibility. So we might need the LM hashes. Now, the LM hash is the weaker version of it, obviously. So if you've got uh, LM hashes around in your systems, you should uh, really uh, take care about that problem and try the hardest to get rid of it. Um, it it's not about if somebody can crack it, it's just about how short time you have if somebody gets those hashes. 
Uh, now, anti-hash is, is a little bit better, but still, it is crackable as well. And there are numerous tools that can uh, deal with that. Um, cane enable, loft crack, everybody, everything that we could use historically, and then there are new tools for do, doing that as well. We do have uh, rainbow tables, um, very advanced, pre-calculated uh, password hashes with, with corresponding passwords that you can use on, on online sites. So you just um, upload your hashes and you will get them cracked by somebody else. That's cracking as a service, maybe. I don't know. Um, cracking so, as a service. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Windows as a service, now cracking as a service. That's good. So, so, I mean, that community is moving forward as well, and that community is u using the, the gathered effort as well to give that kind of a service. So um, if, if somebody has already cracked that password, they will publish it on some database, and then everybody else will get hold of that password again so, uh, as they present the, the, the hash value. So... Um, we, we still have the problem with pass the hash. As, as, as far as we have uh, Windows single sign-on and the protocols Windows are using, we, we, we're going to have that problem left in the system. What we can do, we can try to disable subsystems using those hashes and then try to restrict the, the use case of the hashes, like we're preventing NTLM, we're preventing the LM protocol. Uh, we using MS Chap V to to make it harder to do um, network based pass the hash or reflection attacks or, or there are many names for for these type of, of attacks and we can start relying on ticket based authentication systems like Kerberos or uh, federation based authentication systems. Mm, you gave me lots of cool ideas. Yeah, which which will basically take take away the pass the hash situation if we start using. Um, SAML v2 or uh, um, WSFED or, or anything similar in, in the federation um, scenario, then we don't have really the same type of pass the hash problem. You still have to authenticate to your local federation service, and then from there you'll get another type of ticket you present to your applications. Uh, so applications will not be vulnerable for pass the hash per se. All right, then um, quickly, please, even though we've done it before, mm. remind us how we can extract hashes. Yeah. Then uh, from there, how we can crack hashes. Mm -hmm. uh, demo time. Yeah. So let's switch over to this guy over here. Uh, as I said, we've done this before already, but let me just do it again. I mean, I use different tools. Again, it's been recorded. Please go watch uh, Defense in Depth 8.1 Windows, Windows 8.1 Security. Um, this will have many similar demos, but Hussain will just remind you how you can um, actually crack the hashes. Yeah, this is the classic Mimikatz um, type of DOM, the secure LSA. Uh, and then, as you can see, you can fairly easy do it in those simple steps. And there we go. We do have the hashes for different uh, accounts. Um, either the computer account itself or people logged into this computer, like local um, users or domain users. All right, how can we crack it? Mm -hmm. Well, cracking, once you have that, uh, then you push it away to some tool that will help you do that, like um, the cane enable, cane for enable. instance. This the old, but the, the still very, good. very old, still yet very useful tool. Uh, we can do LM hashes, NT hashes. We can obviously do NT LM v2. Um, and this is MS Chap v2 basically over the network. We can do a lot of other protocols, as you can see here. These tools are not only bothering about the anti hashes, they do uh, a lot of other protocols where the same problem uh, exists. So, pass the hash once again is, is by protocol rather than by um, operating system or version of operating system. Uh, so this is just a quick one. Um, another thing we can still do, though, we, we've been mentioning Kerberos and, and federation-based or ticket-based authentication. So that's another interesting scenario where we should start looking at what could we do with, with Kerberos. Is it possible to crack Kerberos tickets, for instance? Can we... Do we have the same type of problem with that? I was going to ask this question. This is unfair. Yeah. Uh, well, let us look at this situation. This Because... Uh, um, Kerberos is a protocol which is mainly used in any operating system, right? Yeah. It's a security standard, and it's a ticket and base uh, protocol. So, yeah. how can we crack the tickets? Yeah, let me just show you um, a sample for that. Uh, let me just find the right characters in here. Uh, 
So um, I do have, this is just a command prompt as a regular user on the machine. And I will just issue a command called set SPN and query Active Directory for uh, services that are Active Directory integrated. So the dash Q and then um, I ask for all protocols, all services registered in Active Directory for Kerberos integration. Um, obviously, I'm logged in as a local user, then I'm not able to browse Active Directory. So I need to be somebody on, on Active Directory to be able to do that. Let I me think just, we go with some hashes. Yeah, well, let me just do that again. Run as a different user. And I will do SEC demo. Oops. Forgot the password. No, I'm. it's the keyboard layout that is messing with me a little bit on my computer. So we don't have a Swedish yeah. layout here. Anyways, now I'm running this in, uh, in another window. Let me just adjust the font for that so you guys can see what I'm doing. This will be a little bit better. And let me just grab the same command again and then do it. There we go. So if I just go ahead and query Active Directory about all re registered services for Kerberos authentication, these are services registered for Kerberos single sign-on. So I do, hey, tell me all protocols, all service principal names, and there are on different machines, different services that will accept Kerberos as an authentication ticket. Okay. Um, for instance, we can find on SRV3 there are uh, web-based service. So if you access SRV3 with HTTP or HTTPS as a protocol, then it's possible to perform a single sign-on on that web application. Mm -hmm. um, and we know that there are terminal services, there might be SQL services and so forth um, in different applications or different. I see there is a SQL server on, on this machine as well. Um, so all of that information is, is accessible and available in our systems. And we can actually, just by being a normal user in Active Directory, start enumerate this type of information. This is all related to authentication and credentials as well. So we don't need to dump memory to start with the, doing this one. Uh, we just need to be a regular user account in the domain. Um, now, what's more interesting is that if we have a service running as a specific user account, let's look at this one down here. It says intranet-svc, and this is just a user account. This is not a machine. This is not a computer. This one is probably running the intranet web application as the, mm -hmm. the IS user um, running that application. So looking at those types of accounts, the, the service accounts, we encounter an Active Directory, we know by uh, uh, history that these accounts, once created, they will keep uh, more or less a static password throughout time. Um, so we create these accounts, set a static password on it, and the password will never change. Basically, same password from day one until we change that application, so we remove that account. Um, that makes it a very interesting attack vector. See, so if I can grab a Kerberos ticket a service ticket that designated for a user to access that service, mm -hmm. that ticket will be encrypted with the service account password. And by knowing that the service account it doesn't have a dynamic password, it's not changed over time, it's a static password. And if I take care about cracking that Kerberos ticket, I will end up with the account password sooner or later. Uh, it's it, it's all a matter of time. Uh, I need to consume some computer resources and some time on this to get it done. So let's just give you a, a quick demo about that. Please. Yeah. So I will go ahead and tell the system, hey, I would like to get uh, a Kerberos ticket for a certain service. Um, oops, that was not the right one. Let me just clean it up a little bit. And of course, I'm using PowerShell. So I'm loading an assembly, a system identity model, which is a built-in assembly in Windows to deal with um, identity tickets. And I'm telling it, hey, the argument list is HTTP, and it's not Web01. Uh, I will do, um, let's see, just keep this one. Intra. <clears throat> 
So I just told it, hey, could you please give me a Kerberos ticket? I want to access a service by HTTP protocol called intranet.sacdemo.com. Uh, remember when we did the um, search for the services, this is the HTTP yes. forward slash intranet. Yes. Okay. So now I, I, if I do K list, which is listing my Kerberos tickets, Kerberos. yeah, I see that I do have a, a Kerberos ticket oh. for that service. So uh, if I now fire up my web browser and go to that service, then there is a ready to use Kerberos ticket. Good. Uh, so let's see if we go to our demo folder again. Uh, Kerberos is, uh, is a special tool that was made available last summer or last Black Hat. Black Hat, yes. Yeah, or I guess it was even more than that, I, almost a year ago, something like that. Um, anyways, this... I mean, I live in Dubai, it's everyday summer for us. So. <laughs> <laughs> summer is not the right indication. So what this one can do, this one can look at Kerberos tickets and start brute forcing the encryption keys. And if you got the encryption key, you get the password. So that's what basically that's we're looking at. Yeah, so we need to extract the Kerberos tickets. And I just made a, a simple mimic curb CMD, which will extract the Kerberos tickets. So if I do dear again, th these are the Kerberos tickets for this user. So I, we just extract them from memory and dump them to files because it's much easier working with them on file. And now our next step will be start cracking these uh, Kerberos tickets. So let's uh, just do this properly. Um, so we do the TGS crack uh, Python script with the word list and then this is a Python script so I do PY TGS crack and then I needed a word list and then the file which is my Kerberos ticket. So the one with one dash. There we go. So this will work on, on that file and working with the word list I made available here until it finds the right password. Now, I hope you made it easy. Yeah, we made it a little bit easier, so this works a little like bit ABC faster. So password is APC123. Obviously, it's in the, in the, in the file, uh, in our word list. Let's just take a look at Which that. Which you can easily crawl from the internet. That's right. So this is the word list, as you see. I had two flavors of that, and the other one was the correct password. So now I know that that service account responsible for the intranet service is actually running with this password. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a very nice way in. I'm just running this all together as a local user. This is a regular user. I don't need to be local admin on any machine for doing this. I can do this all together just as a regular user on a domain joint machine, regular domain user on a domain joint machine. And I can start looking at service accounts with static passwords and start cracking those service account passwords. And most probably those accounts will have more access to other backend components and other components in the domain. So I will most probably end up in a more privileged access level than the one I have already with my original account. Um, so this is, this is what's going on about cracking Kerberos. And now this toolkit provides other means of a, adjusting the ticket so you can tell, hey, I'm domain admin now. And then because you, we can decrypt the ticket, we can change it and reseal it again with the same password and it looks just perfect. Um, so I can actually elevate my privileges on that application by knowing the password for that service account. Cool. So this is just a quick, a quick demo about we do have this kind of vulnerability in Kerberos as well, simply because Kerberos is a, a protocol that uses symmetric encryption. So the same password will be used over and over again, oh, okay. and we, conduct, we can conduct this type of action on it, uh, cracking the password. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, then we said pass the hash, pass the hash, pass the hash. Yeah. So we know we can use privilege escalation with credential tests. So if you look quickly in the slide, we will, we will see that the time frame is usually one day to two days. Mm -hmm. And what happened is it could be sent by a phishing, a phishing attack. But once the credential has been stolen, then uh, you can also search for domain admin and uh, be the domain administrator. I mean, um, you showed a different way. But now I want to highlight this pass the hash again. Mm -hmm. Why? It's really important. 
And uh, even though we as security experts or Microsoft as a software and hardware company and many other vendors, they recommend you, hey, you know what, go to the latest, uh, follow the best practices. We know it's not always the best case. And um, I'm sad to see that I can still see many hotels, many mm -hmm. corporations are on Windows XP. Besides talking about the big vulnerabilities there, yeah. please demonstrate everybody is watching this and mm -hmm. please make sure this has been watched by many people because it's yeah. free. Usually uh, you have to pay lots of money to have Hassan or me in front of you. So please watch it and look at the dangers, how past the hash can harm your organization, Hassan. Mm. Mm. Um, so let's just take it off. Let's do the demo and then we can speak about the details as we go. Uh, I just fire up a command prompt. Let me just check the visibility of that. Uh, sorry. Here we go. So who am I again? I'm a local uh, admin guy on this machine, on this computer. Uh, obviously, if I try to reach out to uh, my domain controller, um, I should have trouble doing that. SRV1 is the domain controller. If I try to reach out to the C$ dollar share, which is an admin share for the C drive on the domain mm -hmm. controller, it will start asking me, hey, what's your username, what's your password? I'm just, ru just running as a local admin account on this PC right now. The PC is member of the domain, but I'm just a local user, so I don't have any access. Admin access. Yeah. So let's just put this in the background and then go back to Mimikatz. I'm now running Mimikatz, the same Mimikatz we did before, and, and waiting for an admin or something more privileged to be logged into this machine. It's like fishing, right? Uh, you put the bait yeah. and you throw it to the ocean and That's wait right. until a fish comes and right. bites. That's right. So let's do that again. Uh, somebody with high privs. Like the administrator. Yeah, logging in this machine. And then there we are. So we minimize this session. And then we do secure LSA logon passwords. And then we got a little bit in the top. This is the administrator account on the SEC demo logged into SRV1. And this is the NTLM hash for that account. So I take that with me. I just copy the hash, just highlight it and copy it. I got that now. And then go back to um, Mimikatz and use the same secure LSA, but instead of collecting the uh, logon passwords, I will use the PTH pass the hash module in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I will just repeat that pass the hash PTH, and it will receive a couple of parameters. For that, I need to provide a forward slash and a user parameter colon administrator. And then another forward slash domain, and obviously the domain name. And another forward slash NT LM. And then the NT hash uh, I just kept in the clipboard from the previous step. So once running that, uh, I will receive a new command prompt. Now this command prompt is now loaded with the goodies. Yeah, that's the credentials I just injected. That NTLM hash I just injected into the system. So using this one, I do the net use and then the backslash SSRV1 backslash C dollar sign. Uh, and then obviously I could reach that one. Just to show you the difference between these two guys. This is the one with the admin access privilege. Okay, and this is the one, the original one without the admin access privilege. Look, both of them have been running or are running with my local user. This one is a little bit special where I did inject um, uh, the hashes for the domain admin and memory for the LSA process um, uh, governing that one, uh, whilst this one is running without those hashes. And this is basically past the hash. This is how easy it is to perform past the hash. And then use some credential you grab from off some machine, 
You might use this one on a totally different machine if you would like to. Um, if, if I suspect that multiple uh, accounts are sharing the same password, I can jump between accounts doing this, this type of operation as well. It's still called pass the hash. Um, uh, and I don't need to bother about the clear text password anymore. I don't need to crack those hashes. As, as far as there are protocols willing to use the single sign-on components in Windows um, based on whatever I'm logged in in this session, then pass the hash will work just perfectly. So that you can establish RDP sessions. If RDP single sign-on is, is enabled, you can access websites, intranet, or so, so forth if, if that's enabled for those uh, protocols as well. And of course, you can access uh, file resources and, and other type of Windows resources as well. Um, cool, cool. Um, yeah. This is one thing which I want to highlight here. Like, uh, some of you might say, hey, when is the administrator going to log on to this PC? Please don't forget. A uh, usual standard user don't have all these rights. That's yeah. why uh, it's so common that if you think it's going to take some time, yeah, it might some, yeah. take some time, but the hackers have unlimited times. So and, as long as... Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's the case is actually that uh, attackers will do something we call lateral movement. Uh, so they will be jumping from one workstation, one server others. to another until they reach the final destination, final. which is that's the workstation or the domain admin is or... Uh, that there is a server admin, so if I take this one, I might take all the backup system or I take the virtualization system or the system center management system or whatever, and then I will be able to get my hands on more important, more precious pieces of, of the ecosystem in the company. So lateral movement together with pass the hash, two, two very important components um, per se, but together it's a very lethal weapon. So you can you reuse passwords uh, across multiple machines until you reach your final destination, final destination. which is a domain controller and, and gaining access and gaining control over that one. So this was a good summary as well. In summary, what have we covered in this session? So we, we covered how we can steal hashes, yeah. how we can crack hashes, mm -hmm. how we can uh, crack Kerberos tickets. tickets as well. Yeah. And here's probably three important points mm -hmm. which I want to mention. One. You are the weakest point. Yeah. Humans. Yeah, the users. The users, users. are targeted. I mean, um, they are number we one. We are all point. users. Yeah. And we are the number one target, so you are the weakest mm. point. We are the weakest point. And start to hack yourself first before you hack someone else. Mm. Secondly, you should know your stuff. And I, I keep telling this. Like, can you imagine you going to a doctor and yeah. saying, hey, doctor, I'm sick. Find out what's wrong. Mm -hmm. He's going to look at you or she's going to look at you. Excuse me? So you have to specify what your issue is. That's why you have to yeah. know your body. Same exists to your network. Mm. Know what is in your network. I know some of you work in a huge network like Microsoft. It's really hard to know, but I'm pretty sure you have segmentation. Yeah. You have jobs. Yep. Yeah, and, and, and speaking about segmentation, we've been speaking a lot about network segmentation. Now, the new things here uh, is that we, we need to start speaking about uh, credential segmentation, identity segmentation as well. So if you're managing your domain controller using this workstation, uh, this workstation shouldn't be used for any other type of, of, of management purposes because this is equally important as your domain controller is. So if somebody gets in, in, in touch with it, then they are basically in touch with your domain controller the way you, you do. Um, so we should segment the access not only based on network, we should segment the access based on identities as well. That's where we, we need to go. And I think uh, Microsoft came with uh, something good, which is Rabak, role-based access yeah, control, yeah. which uh, are the features for pass uh, to hash in Windows 10. Mm. Um, they are all good, but only when you implement it. Mm. And then all the, the whole model with just-in-time access, the new Active Directory, and Windows Server 2016 with the privilege access management models, uh, where you will uh, <laughs> request access to your uh, elevated privileges, and you will get that that access within a certain time frame. If you don't use that uh, uh, access, if you don't acquire your tickets within that time frame, you will not be your dom that domain admin anymore. Uh, so all good things coming out. And the other thing we should really recommend here as well is the local admin password Passwords. system. Yeah, that was released uh, uh, earlier this year. Um, it was an open source project. Now it's 
turn that into a Microsoft product, which is fully supported for enterprises. So start looking at that. That will manage your local admin passwords and give you uh, randomly set local admin passwords with the possibility to read them uh, using the delegation model in Active Directory. So you can still manage and, and reach out to your machines with those local admin accounts. I mean, I had this in my summary notes here as well, passwords. Mm. Yeah. Um, still today, I ask many people, how long is your password? Please don't answer this to me. Uh, ask this question to yourself. How long is your password and how complex is it? Mm. Our demo showed that very clearly that the shorter, the less complex, the easier to hack. Yeah. Choice is yours. We will be here. Uh, I would like to thank you to Hussain uh, for sharing his expertise. Mm -hmm. Next module, I'm going to have Raymond with us. And um, we're going to talk about forensics. You saw how we can attack. We're going to assume ha attack happens. Yeah. Next is how we can um, find how it was attacked. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for watching. Yeah. We will be back. Thank, thank you. you.